Can you hear me? Uh, the very first thing. Hi, Omer. Uh, sorry, I was trying to get the mic to work. It was just, I, I actually had the thing unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> Story of Omer Second. and his microphones. <laughs> uh, uh, All right. I was just going to ask if you can ask for questions on the Friday for the, the test. Because I know it's going to be a little bit harder because you can't look through and we can we can't go through question by question but friday test on, on this friday, friday is not going to be test no no i it's mean it's going to be friday after i mean the the review of oh the, the review uh, the review <laughs> the review let's do it in the class so i can bring it up and show it to everyone in the lab all right okay we'll do that we'll talk about the the individual questions i'll take it up in the in the thing, but overall the performance was very good. Uh, okay. People got good marks. I'm happy. Um, so, uh, would you upload rest of the lectures? Everything's on YouTube. Uh, the things that are not on YouTube are on Big Blue Button Abbey. You know that, right? When you go to Big Blue Button, when you go to here to log in, these are all the lectures. You see that? Everything's here. So, I will double check to see if I have the links over there, but I think one of the... Hmm, okay, I'll double check to see which one it is. I thought I updated everything, um, but um, I don't know. Usually, um, where is she? Yeah, uh, usually um, I... Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I went through it. I didn't I didn't see anything missing. But anyways, uh, before we begin, let's kind. Of, I want to just wrap up and talk about the uh, the exception handling. Well, we we went through it and we we'll see how it works. There are a few things over here in the notes. Uh, oh, I, I haven't shared the screen. If I shared the screen, I think you would see much better. Share the screen. Um, All right, uh, so you can see my screen, right? Hopefully. Can you see my screen properly, people? Let me just go over here and answer. All right. Okay, so we talked about exception handling and I, I explained exactly how it is. We had some examples on the thing uh, with that uh, integer thingy uh, that I posted. What I did not talk about were the exit, exit conditions in exception handling. Inte, you have a question? Yes, go ahead. Oh. Hello? Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh. No, I didn't have a question. Oh, okay. Okay, you rose hand. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. All right. So, we talked about exception handling, but I did not talk about uh, uh, no exception. We talked that no exception are functions that they are not supposed to throw exceptions. That that's no problem with those. So if you actually use them in a try statement, then yeah. Um, yeah. Talking about exit conditions. So this is not C++. This is something that is from C. Um, uh, there's a function called exit, which essentially translates to a return in, in main with a value in front of it. So when you say return 50, that 50 goes to operating system. Same thing as exit. When you actually call exit, it actually... Uh, uh, returns the exit function. So in here it says int exit. That's actually void. It's not int if I believe correctly. Hmm. I don't think exit returns anything. There is no int. If it exits, there is. If this is wrong. It shouldn't be in. Anyways. Um, anyways, I seriously think that this is not int. It's void. But anyways, uh, so the value that you return put over here, it returns it to the uh, to the operating system. At exit, it returns, it receives a pointer to a function with this format. So if you have a function with this, like that returns nothing receives, you can actually do stuff in it. 
right before the program exits and uh, it's it's removed from the from the thing it's kind of a I can't call it a destructor but it's like you are having a destructor for a class but it's for the entire program okay and this is not C++ this is C pure C so that's that so if you want something to happen when when the program exits right before the program exits and you want to do certain type of condition stuff whatever you want to do um, you can actually put it over there and it runs at the at the at the end if program exits normally or if the exit function is called so oh there you go now it's fixed it says void over here so uh, I, I gotta okay I gotta uh, send um, a, a request a correction for that but anyways so when exit actually happens when you call exit it returns normally therefore uh, all the objects are destroyed all uh, in um, the functions that you re all the functions that you uh, register for at exit they're all going to get called all the uh, uh, resources of the program is given back to the os when you are going there are two different types of exit that you want to state that hey i i i am exiting the program but this is not a normal exit and you want the, the compiler to know uh, what is terminate and the other one is abort um, what happens is that uh, uh, terminate come the, the terminate is uh, as if uh, t a terminate is as if you have uh, an exception that is thrown and that exception is not caught that terminates your program so termination oh there you go a mechanism that they cannot find the handler for for a thrown exception okay so that's what terminate is so when you actually terminate uh, it essentially uh, terminates the program in that way and therefore it goes to uh, um, uh, uh, ending the program and because it's abnormal uh, all the things that you actually added to at exit they're not going to get called um, the abort is the same thing as uh, terminate uh, but it completely aborts the uh, the uh, uh, execution of the program without any of the resources being returned so it's a hard stop at your program and it it should not be called unless you really n know what you're doing so um, never use abort and terminate at at your stage mm, study about it and see what they are uh, i don't even like calling exit uh, because calling exit essentially is a go to to the end of the thing you can always avoid calling exit by creating one if statement in your main so exit I do not like um, but uh, so it's essentially essentially return exit one and return one are the same and that's that um, so that's something that I did not uh, cover with exception handling that it's covered uh, <clears throat> after that we are going to talk about we are going to talk about uh, standard template li library. Now, standard template libraries you, um, starts with uh, um, starts with uh, containers. Now, to understand how containers work, um, I have uh, um, a couple of slides and a, a source code written for you. Um, that that I actually implemented a uh, few things for you um, so you can actually test it uh, and see how they work behind the scene I had some kind of a, a simple impl implementation of the uh, couple of containers that we have in standard template library uh, I'm just gonna put it up for you right now so you'll see give me two seconds so I can bring it up um, three four five
The first one is called a stack. We talked about it in class in like, I think I just mentioned that I'm going to talk about it or something. Uh, but let me just bring it up. Add existing project. Isn't a stack just basically a linked list? They're all linked lists. Containers, everything, well, they're all linked lists. Well, isn't the vector uh, an array, not a linked list? No. Give me a second. Oh. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me just, the, these, the, 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 these projects are 2019. Let me just update the thing and save it. That's that. And the other one too. Same time. Okay. At the same time, I am going to bring these up. I've added a couple of uh, slides that I put it somewhere over here. I'm just going to try and find it. Mm, sandbox. There you go. So slide, uh, uh, stack. So when we talk about stack, this is actually what happens. Let me just show you exactly what a stack is. A stack... Uh, is a combination of two classes working together. One, the, the, now the, the stack that you use is like a sophisticated one, but the reason I'm say, telling you sophisticated is that uh, what you see over here as stack is a class, so class stack. It has a pointer called top in it. Depth, I added it. You cannot have this one if you want to, but I just added over here just to show you what it is. So it shows the, de shows the depth of the stack, which in this case I put over here for it could be a number whatever number it is whatever the depth is depending on what we're going to put so i'll put zero over here in this case because it is there is nothing in it but that's essentially what a stack is a stack has series of nodes so it actually owns another class that you see over here that is a node and that node has two parts it has a data part that is the type of any data that you're holding in it. It could be integer, it could be C strings, it could be cars, employees, hospitals, whatever you have. And next over here is a pointer of type node. So it essentially points to the next node. And top over here is a pointer to a node too. So when you look at the stack that has like four, uh, 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 four, elements in it, like an array of four integers, a stack of four four uh, pieces of data looks like something like this. So the top points to the top node, and then after that it's next, and next, and next, and the last one hits the null. That shows where null is. That's why I'm saying depth over here is something optional. You can, as you are what we call pushing, push values into a stack and you add the values inside these nodes you add to the depth so if you want to know how deep is your stack usually do check what it is but the whole idea of stack is that always the only thing that you have available at and on hand is the top value you do not have the 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 old ones that's the idea of the stack and you don't need to actually see the old ones if you need the old ones you have to remove the top one get the data do whatever you are doing and then you have the next one so an empty stack by default looks like something like this it has a depth of zero and the top of the the top pointer that is supposed to point to a, 
uh, node is actually null and then uh, what you do you actually push a value into it so as soon as you push one value to it the value goes into data and the next of that one because the top was null, null it becomes null and then you push another value the other value gets added oh this is actually wrong this is a list let me just uh, <laughs> let me just fix this thing this is not a, a stack it's actually a, a, a queue let me just bring it over here so there you go so when you when you actually push that the first one is correct but you push the second one you push the second one this is supposed to happen so essentially you push the second one uh, let me just bring it up and so we'll show it to you this is supposed to point to here And this one goes up here. So it looks like something like this. So as soon as you push something, that goes on the top and replaces the uh, the next one. And you pop. What, what pop does, it pops the last one that is over here and goes back. So you always have access to the value that is at the top. And that's what uh, a stack looks like. So every node has a piece of data. For every single push that you do, yet, uh, one node will be added to the stack. Uh, and always top points to the last thing that is pushed in. When you pop the top node up, what happens is that it literally returns the value of DE to you and goes back up to what it was before and then goes back to the previous one so stack works always to first in last out so as soon the, the first one that you hit in uh, in uh, push is the last one that comes out a stack is the most common used link list in the operating system because every single function call that you do essentially gets pushed into a stack and that's how the return statement knows what uh, where to go back to when a function is actually called so when a function is called the address of the location where function is called from is pushed into the stack and then another function is called the address of the second function called is pushed to a stack when the second function goes return the return pops the address out and knows where to go back to and like that function calls are managed in the computer and that's what the stacks are now uh, uh, for the queues the story is a bit different queues have different types of uh, shapes and models and everything a queues node usually depending on what type of a queue we have it has a next pointer and a previous pointer so a node of queue if, if it's a double DQ actually double uh, W and the Q if that's the case then it has a next pointer and a previous pointer which means each nodes knows who's next and knows who's previous unlike um, uh, stacks that each node only knows who's next in a queue each knows node knows who's previous and who's next and a fully functional queue that has all the bells and whistles it knows where is the head of the queue where is the tail where where is the head of the queue where is the tail of the queue which one is the one that I'm dealing with currently and what is the size of the queue and a queue when it's fully built looks like something like this so each uh, the head points to the first node and from that you can go next 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 and if you go to to the next one and you can go back to the previous one so an empty uh, Q essentially looks like something like this. It has obviously size over here is not um, four. The size over here will be zero. Uh, 
Uh, uh, professor? Yes. Uh, isn't this what you're describing, a list, not a queue? Because a queue is strictly uh, first one in, first one out. Omar, all uh, these as... things are called list. Yeah, yeah. So I know, I know. I mean, like... Thing. Stack is a list, yeah. queue is a list, DQ is a list, binary queue is a list, all these things. Yeah. Binary tree is a list, these are all lists. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I know, but I mean, like, it would, if you would, I like, why would you call it a queue? Because you can traverse... Because the first one and first one out doesn't have to follow the rule because you, uh, that's the only reason why I'm like wondering why you would call a doubly linked list a uh, The, a the reason is the, it, the functionalities that you call, I'm going to come to it in a second. I'm giving you the general one, then I'm going to give you the specializations for it. Give me two seconds. Okay. So this, this is a list that is a, that has all the uh, most information about the nodes that it has in its in, in its uh, prop, uh, it, in most of the nodes that it owns. So when a single one is created, everything is pointing to the single one, its head, its current and tail. And when it's many, then you can actually traverse through it. As I was say, you can start from the beginning, go to next and next. And, and, and because of this uh, traversing through, I think one over there is extra that is not supposed to be. So that's one two, three, so the other one has to get treated. That's one, two, and three. And this one needs to get deleted. All right, let's delete this one. There we go. So yeah, so it goes to next and until it hits the last one. And you can go backward and forward in it. This is what uh, 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 double linked list looks like. And this is one of the most efficient ones. The reason I'm telling you this is that if you look at other types of lists, like for example, a list that only has a head and has a current, so you can only go in one direction. If that's the case, you can go next, 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 and when you reach the beginning, if you want to go back, you have to count how many C, how many times you went forward. You have to go to the head of the queue and traverse back to it to get to the to to the node that is the previous one. So, the action of previous for this forward list that we have is extremely expensive. In this one, if I want to go to next, it's fine. But if I want to actually go one backwards, then I'm in trouble. Okay, and usually these type of lists, they actually don't contain like when again, the implementations are different. We have uh, lists that they are just like this and they don't have a current at all. And they're just like this. And what they do is that this becomes essentially a stack or we have a queue which uh, it has a head and tail, and you add to the tail and remove from the, the head as, uh, as we saw before. Or uh, we have a queue that doesn't even know where the head and tail is, and it only has a queue, which means a current, which means when it goes back and forth, you know where you're standing right now dealing with. You can go to the previous, or you can go to the next one, but going to the head of the queue is very expensive. Going to the tail of the queue is very expensive too. And these are all many different ways that a queue, uh, a list can actually uh, uh, work. So, uh, to what uh, Omar was saying, how do we limit the, uh, how do we limit the actions to a list identifies what a list is. If we only get from the top and put back on the top, we call that a stack. Uh, uh, you had a question. Somebody had a question. I missed it. Yes. Yeah. I just I just wanted to ask the exact same thing that you you were just mentioning. That's oh, yeah, why. Okay, I, yeah. yeah. So yeah. so so essentially, how do we treat a list? How how when we create a list that only have certain features, it dictates what it is. If I call it a queue, insertion always happens to the tail. Removal opens ha always happen from the head. If you are dealing with a stack, insertion and removal always happen to the head, and we call it a top. 
if you have a priority queue then it's always created sorted which means it traverses through the nodes and sees where it's supposed to insert and inserts it over there and so on so forth okay now having said all these things we have uh, uh, the standard template library that has many different containers that they try uh, they, they are written in the most efficient way to do all the things that you want to do so when you're actually going through these containers and you're looking at what they do we have array we have vectors we have queues we have forward list we have list and all the things that we have over here are essentially different versions of a linked list that is created now to demonstrate how it's actually created I created a stack and I think a queue uh, let me just bring it up it's actually a DQ, but uh, I'll call it Q over there. Add uh, So when you look at the stack, the implementation looks like something like this. It's not a very complicated one. As you see, it's a template for a stack that I created. And um, as you see, there is a node. Node has... Uh, a next pointer that points to the next one it has some kind of a data I created a constructor that uh, sets the data and sets the next uh, pointer and this node is owned by a stack of its own type so the stack that I have and as you see the code is very small and it does exactly what we wanted to do the stack has a top it has a push and a pop and, and is empty and a destructor if we have a stack that is populated and we want to get out we don't want to have any memory leak what a push does it creates a new node and makes the next node next of that node point where currently top is pointing and sets the top to the node so this is essentially pushing to the top of the node and to pop it receives the value out of the top node makes the top one point to next and deletes the top and returns the value and that's pop and uh, a stack is empty if top is null and a destructor pops until there is nothing there so as you see this is a simple stack and it's written in 39 lines of, lines of code and you can push into this stack any type you want I had an example over here I think with an employee yeah, I create an employee class and I'm pushing and popping this the employee inside the, the stack. So this is the main for the stack. Uh, yeah, so walking through it, it shows exactly what happens. So in here, as you see, uh, let me just see if... Um, anyways so um, it's pushing one by one into D so as uh, so this is now pushing doubles as you see it comes over here push one double and makes the top to be that double and the old top becomes the next of this double and it goes through it one by one like this and when it pops it it's 1.2 2.3 the ones that are popped back out are actually popped out in reverse and that's the nature of a stack and when we look at the empl uh, the employees the employees are exactly pushed the same way and when we pop them they are popped in exact reverse order so we have Homer uh, uh, Homer uh, sorry Larry popped in then Carl Frank and then Homer and when they are popped out uh, they're pushed in that order when they are popped out they are in reverse order so that's a stack go through it I'm not gonna go through it because in data structures you're gonna go through it uh, implementing it so you know how it's gonna work out this is just an example of it to see how it's done that's uh, a stack please walk through it uh, but to show you uh, a more sophisticated linked list let's look at the queue Here I created the queue, if I recall correctly, and I named all the methods 
with the exact same name that we have in the standard template library. So, so as you see, the queue is getting created. You can create a queue with an initial size if you want to. You can create a queue uh, with a certain size and put values in it. You can copy a queue. You can move a queue. You can uh, uh, destroy a queue. And we have the assignment operator, move operator created. It has a size that tells you how much, what is the size, if it's empty or not. It has uh, an index operator that you can deal with it like an array. You can see what is in front, you can see what is at back, constant and non-constant. You can push back, which essentially is push. So as you see, if it was just a regular thing, you own, like if it was a regular queue, you only push to front and uh, you only push to back and pop from front, but it has both of them. So you can push in which di whichever direction that you want. And I'm not going to go through the code. It is... Well, uh, quite lengthy so please take a look at it walk through it I wrote it so you can actually see how uh, how it's actually written and how we can actually push and pop uh, uh, write the all the things that we have in standard template library um, write the code of our own and see how it works behind the scene um, any questions now to this point questions all right so again this is all written for you you don't need to actually uh, use these uh, it's just uh, a good idea to take a look at them uh, and see how they work and appreciate uh, the complexity of the work that is happening behind the scene and no way you, uh, what I've written over here is even close to the efficiency of what we have in the C++ library. They are the most efficient algorithms over there. I just did a sorry attempt to show you how it may uh, be written. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> okay, so let's come over here. Uh, we start with uh, vectors. Vectors are one of the quickest ones, and uh, um, they work exactly like what I showed you over there. So you can create uh, it is in the vectors. Uh, it, it is in the vector header file, um, and it's in standard. Obviously, it's in the standard namespace. So I create a vector of doubles. So it creates vector of doubles. You can see if it's empty or not. You can push back. You can uh, uh, look at the elements exactly like a regular array, um, and uh, you can uh, pop or look at the what what you have. Uh, uh, look, access or modify uh, the the list if you want to. Uh, you can remove values from list, and uh, it's um, essentially to be honest. Uh, anytime you want to use an array, try to use a vector. It's always uh, uh, better to use a vector. It's much more efficient than an array, and uh, it doesn't have all the, the problems that you have with dynamic arrays and everything. So that's how vectors work. You create a vector with some kind of a type that you want, and you can push values into it, pop values from it, access the values using uh, index operator, and that is that. Any questions about vectors? Uh, I do have one question. Go ahead. Um, because you said that vectors are also uh, structured-wise similar to other clips, but they're uh, but they're structured in a way to make sure it's still a contiguous. It is a contiguous. Number. Yes, it is a con so okay. it resizes itself. That's why it's very. It is the one of the fastest ones. Yeah, because that the only reason why I was asking because like certain algorithms rely are a lot faster. It's because it's a lot faster to search an, an array than it is to search a link list because the fact is again obvious. You don't have to go next, next, next. It simply can okay. jump from place to place and go back and forth. Yeah, that's why you're absolutely yeah. right. Yes, and that's why I said, th th hence saying that 
whenever you want to use an array, use a vector instead. Okay, okay. So uh, it works exactly the same way. Uh, oh yeah, okay, that's all I want to ask. Yeah. So, but like, but, but for example, DQ. If you use DQ, is not the, it's it's not efficient at all. It is actually used it's used as nodes. So uh, that's going to be much. Uh, it's it's not uh, a, a contiguous as uh, vectors. Uh, that's something that you need to uh, be aware of. Uh, uh, I think Iman had a question. Sorry, so yes. the only difference between vectors and arrays is that vectors resize themselves, like that's the only difference? It's in a standard templated library and um, iterators work with it. Uh, it um, you can use vectors because all the algorithms in standard template library with vectors more efficiently than arrays. They work with arrays too but they work mm -hmm. more efficiently with arrays. Like, let's say if you want to have, uh, I don't know, uh, a search being done in an array and you want to do it in, in, a, in a parallel process way, so the search done in four processes, you can do that using vectors uh, and an algorithm, setting the algorithm to do multi-threading for you. Okay. okay, and that just becomes more efficient, that's all. Thanks. Okay. So uh, the DQ, so let me just save this as So as you see, it's exactly like a vector. Take a look. It's literally the same copy as you had with the other one. Okay. Vectors, DQs, and everything you can actually create it. You create them using the fault constructor. Okay, but it's always better to set their size initially to what you think is the best fitting size for real application don't let them resize themselves dqs are much more efficient in resizing themselves than vectors vectors when they resize themselves you know what happens it's exactly like you resizing a memory it deletes the old one creates a new one it's like that so so uh, a, a question that i have i want to see who can actually answer this question if you want to resize an array let's say you have an array that has 5,000 integers if you and this is 5,000 uh, uh, dynamic integer in memory if you want to make it 5,001 integers how much memory do you need can I tell can anybody tell me memory in it pardon me 10,001? 10, 10,001, yeah. You need 10,001 because you have to do 5,001, copy 5,000 from old. That's how expensive it is when you are resizing a vector. DQs are not like that. When you have 5,000 integers and you want to add one integer to it, you only need the size of the memory plus the pointer for back and forth. But of course, when uh. you're accessing the queue, it's DQs using the index operator it is much more expensive than q because it has to go back and forth into the nodes and count them so again look at the dq and and, and then you can appreciate how it's done uh professor i do have one question yes uh oh. about the reason why i always i wondered why they always did he always had to do uh like had to do that but always doing the copies like i always wondered why didn't you just move to the end of the array and then allocate the additional memory at the end of the array just point to that memory <laughs> right behind it that's the one thing i always wondered like like because they are just memory manipulation at the end of the day because you you're just manipulating you can't do that because you are not allocating the memory you request it yeah uh, because oh because of the oh so, so because so, you're a so let's put it this way take a look at the, the screen please okay this is the memory and this is the empty space that you have in memory okay 
So let me bring it over here. So this is your memory. Got it? Yeah. Now let's say you want 20 spaces to allocate for you. And here is 25. So what the compiler gives you this, the, the operating system. Yeah. If you want to make this 30, you cannot just add 10 over here because you don't have space for it. So the compiler has to go find some place that has 30 spaces and put it over there. Otherwise, it won't even oh. it won't even do the allocation for you. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, Your okay. Your memory I, I is see extremely it. fragmented, and it and yeah, because yeah. of this problem, the operating system has to find a way. Sometimes you have five gigs of memory, but you cannot allocate five thousand megs because uh, it's fragmented. Because it's just uh, there. There is no continuous memory available for you. That's okay. where linked lists are amazing because you can have half of the links is over here and the half over here and the other over there. The, they the only it. reason why uh, the only reason why I was just thinking like I know it's a bad idea to do it, but it's not a bad idea. You shop. cannot do it. There is no way to oh, no, do no, it. No, I mean, what I was saying, I don't know. I thought you could just see whatever memory is in there, look at it, tell whatever it is void free and then start using it as whatever it is so it's like i don't know what's in here just free it and then i want to use it you can't it's the operating okay. system okay, okay. Operating it's the system operation is exactly like a government that is doing some something in a city you cannot say okay. i want to build a a golf course just wipe out all the houses so i can put my golf course over here you can't do that okay. you cannot just delete stuff because they don't belong to you they belong to someone else right you are crushing oh, wait, 5, what if... Yes. Okay. I was I was about to say there's also a way I know that you, what you can do is trick the, the compiler to think one memory is a different type of memory. So you send it a pointer and say, "Hey, convert this to this type of pointer." And now it looks at this piece of memory as if it was that type uh, of memory and then start manipulating the data there. Yeah. That's but, what but, I yeah, because, but that yeah. that what does that accomplish you? Not much. I, I guess. Oh, yeah, I know. You're, you're meddling with memory that you shouldn't have, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Anyway, so, so yeah. So my point was that please appreciate the fact that all these containers, they work exactly the same way. You learn one, you learn out of them. Now, this is DQ. And if you look at the stack, it's essentially the same thing, but just the methods over here I named properly to match the stack for you. And that's a stack. So all these things are all created for you to use, and they're all in standard template library. As I mentioned, uh, whatever you want, it's probably created and and um, uh, another thing we need to uh, learn about standard lib uh, template library and the containers is the concept of iterator now an iterator is essentially um, um, an iterator is handler for an element it can replace an element for you inside a container in STL. I'll explain. Uh, so this is the stack. An iterator is essentially, so, so when you create a, a a container, any type of container, in this case a vector, you can tell to the code to the to the to, to, uh, to C hey, create for this vector of double, create an iterator and call it I. So this I now can literally replace an element of the vector and 
the plus plus operator for example is overloaded on it so when you set the iterator to the very first element of the actor uh, the actor vector if you do i plus plus now i will refer to the next one and the uh, target of operator the asterisk is overloaded so when you put an asterisk beside it it actually gives you the target of it so essentially uh, accesses the value so iterator is like a I don't want to call it a smart pointer um, intelligent pointer um, kind of a pointer to an element because we have smart pointers if I call it a smart pointer uh, it's going to be confused with smart pointers of C++ but it's kind of a uh, yeah um, compound pointer type of a thing it's a kind of a pointer to an element and all the operators and things that you see over here are overloaded so it actually looks like a pointer but it's not so what happens is that if you set that uh, iterator to point to the very first element of the vector then you can say start from the first one while it is not the last one add one by y to it and access the value so this iterator essentially traverses through the list and this works for all of them you can do this for a vector you can do this for a for a uh, queue you can do this for a list you can do this for for any type of uh, container that you have uh, the iterators work for all of them wouldn't you just call it a container pointer then just to make it less confusing sure kind of a element of a container <laughs> pointer because it's not a pointer to a container it's pointer to an element of a container oh element no uh, what did I write uh, it's uh, it's an iterator um, it iterates literally so uh, simulated pointer to the element of a container let's put it that way okay so that's that And with this iterator, you can actually uh, use uh, auto if you don't know. So as you see over here, I created a, an element, a, an iterator beforehand. If you don't want to, you can simply see auto i is equal to uh, prices.begin. Begin returns an iterator to the beginning. As you see the return value of that, of begin, is an iterator of the same type of the vector so if you have a vector of an employee then i becomes an iterator for an employee element and it it works exactly like that so so if you have the arrow thingy over here then it would be like an arrow uh, arrow element arrow operator for the for the pointer to an employee so that's that Uh, Professor, I just think is to note like uh, iterators work with other containers like strings as well, right? Everything. Because I've used, uh, yeah, yeah. That, I just want because I works, used it. For it strings. even works with files. Oh, okay. Can you I'll, I'll, oh. I'll come to it uh, uh, one by one. <laughs> so iterators work with everything. That's the that's that's the object oriented uh, uh, feature of it. So I um, give it a, give it a second. For now, let's digest it just like this. As we go forward, I'm going to use iterators in different things, and you'll see that uh, uh, it is really helpful. Okay, so uh, we have. Uh, uh, did I have? No, I didn't have that one. So let me just uh, bring the um, um, the employee over here. So I'm going to add existing item so now uh, 
as you see I have an employee class with all the things created for them the, the, the rule of five and everything set for them um, and that's that's the body of my employee class and as you see it for this what here I'm using a list uh, it doesn't matter whatever whatever you use it does not matter um, um, I um, I'm using actually uh, 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 iterators inside a list to add something to the end right before the end or right after beginning and things like that so for list I have a list of employee and I create an iterator exactly push those three things in here now I can start from the beginning go to the end show them one by one I can insert before the last one the employee Homer as you see if I show everything there's gonna be Homer added over here now I can say <coughs> erase one after the beginning and it's going to remove that one and uh, so let me let me actually show it to show the output to you so you'll so you'll see exactly what happens <coughs> so when you uh, when you look at this with a list uh, I'm adding series of employees to a list now I am adding Homer right before the last so as you see I'm saying insert and it accepts an iterator I'll put minus minus en it means one before the last and I'm entering Homer over there then I'm gonna say over here uh, remove the uh, one after beginning so as you see Larry is there Carl is gone right after so you can deal with lists like this and insert values remove values from them um, do literally random uh, access uh, to all the values of the list and that's a demo uh, of uh, lists uh, questions go ahead Jonathan professor misclicked sorry Misc okay that's okay all right so it's 1237 an hour past let's have like five ten minutes break we come back and we're gonna start with files talking about files <clears throat> I'm gonna pause it please remind me to continue recording when we come back okay okay tell me what's up so in the last file that you opened could you could you open it again sorry okay oh you're talking uh, about the list thingy yeah yeah, yeah. okay <clears throat> Yes. So when you're pushing into the list, you're you're passing sort of like an object to it. No, no, like, I'm not passing an object. What did I create? Yeah, um, yes. Yeah, it's like an employee object, right? It creates a nameless employee object. It pushes it into the thing. Yes. So like you have a like like you have a assignment operator that works with this kind of value at no, 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 like no, no, the. No. What is list type of employee? Employee so class. Yeah. So pushback of list automatically receives an employee. See, it receives a move value of an employee. You see that? Yeah. And when I pass a temporary nameless object to it, it literally moves that one into itself and keeps it. Mm -hmm. But like. So, so you did. So you didn't do anything in the employee class to be able to do such a thing, right? Yes, I create the constructor in it. <laughs> Can I just see the constructor. I, I create the constructor in it. There you go. Now, my my problem is with, with the curly braces, like, like, okay, this, like, if you if you if you said the like new, curly, so I could have done it like this if it makes makes you happy. Does that make you happy? And or, like, or, or you, you want me to do this to make you even more happy? <laughs> Shouldn't it be new employee or no? No. Why oh, new? So they're, so they're not addresses. No. Just... Look at the thing. Look at the signature. What do you see over here? I, if I can. Oh, 
Damn oh. it, why is it running away? Yeah, there. <laughs> I want to bring the mouse on it, but it runs. Oh, there you go. You see? What do you see over here? Reference. And what Reference is this? Input. Yeah. There you go. And that's for everything. So if you pass, pass push a, a car, it's going to be car reference. So that's how it passed. Mm -hmm. And it literally moves it in it. Yeah, yeah. So you, it. you don't have any memory loss of any kind. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. All right. Can I turn it back to what it was before? This is ugly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about files. Okay. First of all, we know from OP244 that if I create an o OF stream of type file and I call it nums.txt and I create a double vector over here, not vector from 244, but file, and I create this, it literally writes the double values because this is an iterator for the for the double vector it goes through them one by one and it should puts those values right in a file and nums.txt is going to get created and the values are going to go in there so if i look at this right now i have nums.txt are we okay with this all right so that's simple, straightforward. <clears throat> uh, let me just read. My apologies, my apologies, my serious read apologies about that. So just a second. That's me down to kill us, hold office. Bye. Nim sati gazaims. Apologies. Uh, I have to answer the, the phone. I, I really apologize. All right. So let me change this to F. So we know this is G dash uh, file out. So I'm writing in a file. And then if I actually go through the values that I just created in this file, I can open the file for ifstream one by one read from the file until it cannot read anymore. And the result of that one will be printing the exact same double values out. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, going back to this, I want to introduce something different to you, which is, I'm going to go back to what I had before this, which is OF stream that I had. And instead of creating uh, nums.txt, I'm going to create a num. And I'm going to put bin for binary just to remember that it's binary. You can name it anything. Then I'm going to say create this as binary, please. So now the file is created for binary, although this doesn't mean anything on Linux. They're all the same. You can completely remove this one and do it like this, and it will work perfectly, no problem. But it's just an emphasis. I put it over here so we know it's binary. Now I'm going to have the vector that we had. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So the vector that we have will have more values in it. That's my vector. Then I'm going to go through the one by one. And instead of writing into it like that, I'm going to write into it with the write function. The write function of C is uh, of C++ is one of the most awkward functions I've ever seen in my life. With all the things that we have learned from C language, why they have written this function like this, I cannot answer. But 
the write function receives a constant character pointer in here so the value that is passed over here is a constant character pointer and then of so so <clears throat> let's put it this way in uh, in here it receives address of a byte an address of a byte in C language is character pointer because it is reading from it it make it constant and then in the second part over here it gets how many bytes so you're telling it you're telling to the write function go to this address byte by byte up to these many things right dump it into the file it dumps the values of bytes without interpreting interpreting it to any type of value so essentially what I'm gonna what, I, what I'm about to write over here would be something like this <coughs> so for the address of the byte I'm gonna say address of V address of V will be the address of a double we know that for a fact so address of V well, it's going to be address of the double but write receives a constant character pointer so what I need to do over here is to cast this into a constant character pointer how many do I want to write I'm gonna write over here size of V. So what happens is this it says to the size of V go to the address of the thing and write it into the file and if I run the program over here it will run perfectly the only problem would be is that if I open the file this is what I see in the file as you see the file has just binary values over there that is absolutely make absolutely no sense to me so what happens over here is essentially is a binary dump of the pattern that I have in those doubles one by one and each one of these actually shows a, a byte so so if you look at this in here I have one two three four five six seven eight and in here it ha these are the values see one two three four five six seven eight that's one that's the first that's the first number that's the second number third number fourth fifth six seven eight and these are all the values that I have written so what you see over here as three 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 dollar sign at is essentially ten point one what you see over here as this garbage value that you see over here is the binary representation of eleven point two three two do we understand this? Now what's good about this? So we have created this so in here I'm gonna write binary out what's good about this is that I can actually now open the exact same file with a double value and I can say file dot read and it works the exact same way but I have to cast it back to a character pointer address of V it doesn't care what's in there if I would have designed the read and write not the read but the write I would have actually passed a void pointer in here I don't know why they did a character pointer that we have to do this ugly casting every single time if the read had a void pointer and a write had a void pointer we didn't need to cast it to anything but they didn't and I have no idea why if somebody knows it let me know so I can teach to my students anyway size of V so in here I'm saying read to the size of V and I'm gonna go see out V and when you look at this what you're going to see over here will be 10.1 it reads it binary and a beautiful thing about it is that because the size of 
each because the size of each double is exactly eight bytes exactly eight bytes exactly eight bytes and it goes through the address that it occupies the file is not dependent on what you write if you write it as text if you write it as text if you write that if you write those things as text this will occupy not that one my apologies I opened the wrong one if you write it as text this will occupy one two three four bytes this will occupy one two three four five six bytes this one four and it keeps going like that so each one of them will have a separate number of bytes because it's written as text and then new line backslash n after that and things like that when you are doing it as binary each double will occupy eight bytes because it is eight bytes and because of that fact what I can do I can actually tell to the file to seek for reading to size of V multiply by three and then read again and then see out again and what you will see over here would be 10.1 and 13.43 which is essentially this is the first one I skipped three I for the set for, for the second one that is 14.43 I said skip 24 bytes and read the next that's seek G over here so when you put seek G this means the so essentially this is gonna be file dot seek G the reason they call it seek G is that because uh, um, if stream and of stream they are both multiple inherited into f stream if they only called it seek then it would be confusing which one is being seeked i stream if stream or of stream <clears throat> to distinguish between the two they call this seek g it means seek for getting and the other one is seek p seek for putting so one is get the other one is put so this is <clears throat> address from the beginning of the file so like this you can now jump anywhere in file read and write wherever you want in the file so <clears throat> now that I have done this let's uh, save this over here I'm gonna say J binary and specifically I'm gonna call it random read dot CPP because it's random it's not sequential anymore I can I can go back and read the first one and I can even do this I can say for example um, seek G has many different shapes and forms I can do something like this file dot seek G and in here I'm gonna go iOS and and in here I'm gonna go uh, zero which means go to the end of the file go to the end of the file and uh, stay there so it's gonna go to the end of the file right now now what I can do over here is to write file dot tell G tell G it means tell me tell me uh, 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 where the file is right now so in here I'm gonna use stream position as what it's returning so I'm gonna say over here uh, uh, STD stream stream pose is essentially size T stream pose um, s is set to or position is set to uh, uh, tell G so I know exactly where the end of the file is now I can go over here file.seekg pos minus size 
of v and I can go over there saying um, file dot read exactly the same thing that I had over here and I'll go see out v <coughs> and oh I uh, copied the wrong th uh, edited the wrong thing let me go over here so doing something like this I got a built error size off what does it say oh shoot uh, the minus over here is not gonna work uh, I have to cast this to stream pose. Um, I know, Wilson, you're going to tell me put over here minus something. Is that what you're saying? Actually, I was going to say maybe like multiply, make like position a negative number and then multiply it by the size of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, I wanted to demonstrate this and then tell, I, if I cast this to a stream pose, it will work. I don't, but I'm not going to do that. Anyways, it will work and show the last one. But what I'm see, saying is that instead of doing this I can say over here minus size of V and it's gonna go to the last one so essentially I'm saying go to the last one and read the last one tell G over here tells me where the last is I, I just wanted to demonstrate what is tell G tell G tells you where is the current position of the file so in here I could uh, yeah um, yeah, I don't need it. So if you want to know what is the size of a file, you go seek G to the end as I did and do a tell G, you're going to see what is the size of the file. But anyway, so now if I do it like this, it's going to actually go to the end and print the last one. Oh, again, it's well, I have to cast it. But anyways, I, I don't want to go through it right now, but, uh, but it forget about it for now but I'll, I'll explain exactly what it is uh, it's gonna go let me see if I can do it like this it's giving me segmentation fault why Minus one size of iOS and seek G. Let me see what's going on here. Ah, yeah, I have to, I have to cast it. Forget it. It's too early. Let's go back through it. I don't want to do it now. Let's go back to what I had before. I'll bring it for the next one. Let's save this. So, uh, I'll bring it up when the time comes. And let's remove this one. So, the next thing I wanted to, to, to show you was how actually we can write, read, and write any type of, uh, 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 ABCDE, any type of, uh, uh, thing we have inside the file let me just put it over here so that's the tell g that i was talking about so oops that's the tell g that i was talking about So that actually shows exactly how many characters is the, the file and uh, uh, the size of the, uh, it shows exactly how many records you have in a file. So beforehand, if you recall, we had to do in IPC, in OP244, we were counting how many new lines we had to see how many records we have. We don't need to do that anymore. We simply go to the end of the file and uh, uh, divide the value tell G is returning to the size of the record and that's what we're going to have. So this is the tell G. I'm going to write over here uh, JK tell G. 
tal.cpp. What I wanted to bring for you. Yes, go ahead, Iman. So um, when you're printing, first of all, that iOS binary means that the file contains binary values, right? Like contains addresses. Bytes, yeah, but, but, right? but, but, but remember, everything is binary. This binary is because of this, because of DOS operating system, Windows. When you're on Linux, we don't have anything called binary. Everything is binary. So if so I like, remove this one and I do it the same thing, the, the, the result should be the same. You see? Yeah. So it doesn't, the, uh, quite frankly, I have never used binary file opening because in, in here, it, if you don't put it, it means it's text, but it's not. In Linux, everything is binary. Mm -hmm. So, like when you when you like print into the file, like when you print the bytes into the file, could you, you don't could print, you... you save. Go ahead. You save the print because print implies that you are interpreting and then printing. Like when you mm -hmm. put double V, when you print, it prints it in characters. It's not a print anymore. It writes into the file. Okay, when you when you write the values into the file, could you could you bring up the file, please? So like the 33 is a, is a byte, but what is the, what is the first thing? Zero, 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 zero. So that's interpret. That's this value that you see. No, no. So the value at the left, like before. You're talking about these. No, no. Before that. Oh, this one. No, this yeah. one is, it shows that offset of the file. Oh, okay. it shows it shows the records. So this is how a binary file is shown. Oh, OK. This and then same thing with the with, with the right values, right? The right values is the ASCII version of this. OK, so okay. it says if if I could translate this to ask, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Give me two seconds. So which one was right? Um, no, nah, that's going to be bad. Uh, oh, give me two seconds. We're going to come to it. So bear with me. I'm going to write a class into a file, and then you everything's going to go crystal clear, OK? OK, OK, thank you. OK. So that's that one. This is the, 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 the tell G that I was talking about. So traversing back and forth into the file. So over here, I told you that I have to cast it. Remember that? This is what I was talking about. So when you see, I, I have to actually cast it to be able to go back and forth. So I, so that's uh, that's what ha what's happening over here. So now, as you see over here, I can actually go back and forth into the file. I, I can say actually seek uh, to uh, 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 from. Uh, uh, actually, I put it reverse over there. That's why. I think that's that's why I put the uh, I put it reverse. Let me let me bring it up. Did I put it reverse with it? Um, yeah, it's not here. So I put it reverse by mistake. Offset is supposed to be the first one. I was putting it in the second one. So this shows the direction from where, and this shows if I go back and forth. So in here, I'm saying, for example. Uh, 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 Start reading for a file, go from the beginning to the end, then clear, seek to uh, this position. So this position is an exact position because I'm not saying from where to where. Then I'm going to say read, print. Then I'm going to say from current location, go to backwards and read and print again. So I can go back and forth into the file. And this values for this is iOS current iOS beginning and iOS end. So you are saying from where go back. So you can say from current go backwards. From uh, from beginning go forward is exactly the same thing as this one. It's kind of a redundant thing to do. So if you want to say from beginning go 50 bytes earlier, just use seek G because it's the same thing, no difference. But like this, you can traverse back and forth and go anywhere you want in the file and do whatever you want to do. So it shows first all the values in a file. Let me just put uh, 
a separator over here and now I'm going back and forth in a file to see. so I'm going in here uh, then I'm going backwards so as you see when it reads 12 Point twenty three. it reads and goes to the next one if I want to read the previous one if I want to read the previous one I have to go backward twice so as you see it goes back comes over here at the beginning and goes back twice so it reads the previous one so if you want to read a file backwards you have to read go backward twice read go backward twice and it keep going back like that so that's that one so that is uh, traversing through the file. Something extremely important for you to know, extremely important for you to know is that the action of seeking will not fail the I stream the IO stream. So don't think that if I have, because I have 10 doubles over there, if I seek, seek to a thousand, it's not going to happen. It, it's it's going to fail. It is not going to fail. Okay? This is not going to fail. To check and see if actually your seek G work, you have to do a tell G and see if the address you went to is actually what you wanted. Other than that, seek G will not go into attempts to go, but if it doesn't go, there is uh, uh, it nothing happens. So just be aware of that. So this will not fail. It is extremely important to know that seek doesn't fail. Seek does not fail the I/O stream. All right, now we had an employee over here and for this employee, we're gonna write a main to actually write the values inside the inside a file. So uh, let me see, I think I have to update my employee over here because this employee has only two values. I have to update the employee. So let me update the employee in here. So, uh, that one is, F, so in here, you have to update it in F because I'm, I'm renaming this, I'm renaming this to F dash employee and F that uh, employee. So, uh, you have to, uh, correct the uh, header file in there. Actually, let me do it. Um, cancel and open in here. So this should be f-employee.h. There we go. So now let me remove these two. and add this employee over here copy all right so now that I, now that I have this employee over here I can bring this main up and Iman this is going to this is going to answer your question are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now as you see, I have a vector of employees in here. And if you look at my employee, the employee has uh, salary, employee number, and name. So these are the things that the employee is actually having over there. And the, the employee doesn't have, be extremely careful that uh, no, no resource, okay? This, this, uh, so um, no, no DMA, okay? So keep that in mind. All the information of employee is in the belly of the class. 
if this was a pointer my right wouldn't have worked because then it becomes much more complicated to actually write it we're gonna implement it later on but for now uh, let that be so so now if you actually take a look at this if I write all these things in the binary file it as without uh, um, in the uh, sorry in the text file this is how it's gonna get written we know that for a fact <clears throat> so when it's gonna be written in a file everything is text and I can actually see the text right now let's change this one to uh, to binary so LM composite binary uh, text so I'm gonna do the composite but this one's gonna be as you see now I have a binary file and I'm writing everything I'm saying constant character pointer address of employee and size of employee so instead of actually converting it and using the uh, operator overload that I have done I completely ignore that and just dump the class into the file as I go and when I create this you will see that the employee that is created now is in a binary file but take a look if you look at the binary file you will see that all the values that you have that are ASCII are actually being visible but the rest of the properties that are binary are not visible you don't know what it is so it's literally dump of the memory of the classes one by one into the into the file obviously the size of the file is much bigger because it writes the entire 52 characters over here for name it doesn't shrink it only to the size of the thing and therefore it becomes bigger uh, but later on we're gonna learn that we can actually have two files and use one as index and the other one as a data and uh, then everything's gonna shrink to the proper size but the beautiful thing about it is that now I don't need to have a delimiter to get the fifth record over here exactly like a double or an integer I can simply seek to the value and to where I want to uh, see the file and receive the file and just grab it out and take it out as simple as that so uh, um, now take a look at this now in reading what I'm doing I want to know which row and I want to receive the file show the record from the file so all I need to do is to create an employee clear seek to exactly row number that I have to the size of the employee so if I want the, the first one that's zero multiply it's the first one if I want the tenth one it's gonna be nine multiply the size of employee and that's gonna be the address and I just read from there so this show record jumps to the place that I want and picks up the employee that I want and bring it back no delimiter needed no sequential search needed I can go through it sequentially of course but I can at the same time pick up exactly the one that I want as you see so as you see I'm saying 12 Jack I'll pick it up in here I'm saying 22 and when I'm going to 22 obviously when I try to read the 22nd read is gonna fail the seek is not going to fail but the read of that position will fail and I know that the uh, 22nd is not read and so on and so forth so as you see uh, with binary files reading and writing becomes much faster the file becomes bigger but later on we're gonna learn how to actually index our files so the files that we are reading and writing are reading uh, are not occupying uh, the same amount of space so we kind of simulate the heap as we have yes we'll sit wait why do you have to do minus one on the row oh because the oh, because row is first right yeah 
Oh, okay, no, 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 okay. I, I, I was waiting for that oak to come. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody question? Anyone? Yes, Iman, go ahead. Wait, just to make sure. Yeah, go oh. ahead. Go, go, no, go ahead, Wilson. Well, just to make sure, like, the minus one, that's for, like, the indexes and stuff, right? Yeah, because I, no, I want, yeah. It's, it's address. The address of the first one is zero. Okay, okay. Right? Uh, Iman is next, go. Okay, so in the file, I didn't understand why it didn't print all the bytes. Because like it did print 50, all the bytes, aren't they fifty-two bytes for the for the name itself? Yes, it starts from here, and goes right to the to the beginning of the next one. I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought, I thought okay, okay. I thought I thought so, it's like the same thing. So the first two that you see over here are actually these, salary and employee, mm -hmm. and and don't bother trying to hack the thing through because it's not as easy. Okay, so probably this is the one, and uh, I don't know what is the so. What what is the size of an employee? Uh, size it's uh, twelve and fifty two. I think I set it up to be sixty four, to actually match in here. So when you look at it, I think, I think this is the so each record is like, no. Nah. No, I have to. I have to look. I yeah, it's look. 64, 64. 52 plus 8, 60, and then plus 4 for the end, 64, but exactly. I don't know what is it aligned to. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's... 50, but I don't know what is it aligned to. Is it, Like, we have to see. So we really, we really don't know. And, and again, look at the size. The size, the file over here, what is the size of the file? It's few 52s, right? Or look at this size, nums.bin. What is it, like 60-something? If you look at the size of that file on your hard drive, let's take a look at the size on a hard drive. Uh, go to directory. Uh, so this is num, okay? <clears throat> the size says one kilobyte. It is not one kilobyte. It's not a thousand bytes, thousand twenty-four bytes over there. So this one, as you see, because of segment segments in a file, in a file you cannot have a file smaller than one k. That's what it is. So if it's one k plus one byte, it occupies two k of your hard, because each segment of the file that is addressable is 1024 in this case so files are much more complicated when it comes to it and if you actually look at the property of the thing you will see that it's 64 bytes but the amount like i think in here it mentions over here how much does it occupy 64 bytes it used to mention somewhere i don't know where but anyways, it says size on disk, zero bytes. No, that's not right. <clears throat> it's not zero bytes, 1024. But anyways, <clears throat> so that's that. Anyways, time has passed. Uh, any questions, anyone? Just talk if you have a question. So in lab, probably I'm going to bring you some more sample codes that actually um, does much more cool stuff with the file. I'm just going to uh, push this thing right now not to forget and uh, we'll talk about uh, we'll, we'll talk about these things more the next time we, we see each other uh, and algorithms and things like that uh, any questions before we go any questions one any question two all right everyone have yourself a beautiful day and i'll see you soon